Shalom, one, shalom, one, back for another lesson. And as always, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kakwadash. Next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith regardless of whether people are here or forbear. Uh, this lesson, I'm going to entitle it, His Ways Are Higher. All right. And uh, the reason, the, the inspiration for this lesson came from people asking me difficult questions about why things are the way that they are, uh, why the Lord does different things the way that he does them. And I believe there's a, a scripture in the book of Sirach that, or it's either the book of Sirach or Proverbs, uh, but it says that the ways of the Lord are plain to the righteous, but a stumbling block unto the wicked. All right. But with that being said, you know, um, even asking that question shows a lack of faith. Okay. It shows that you don't really trust that the Heavenly Father, um, you know, is moving on behalf of the good of the of the children of Israel, the elect. Lord willing, we are that number. All right. Um, so I just want to bring out some scriptures pretty much telling us, you know, a quick exhortation telling you guys to remain in the mindset of trusting in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai's judgment and not uh not really worrying about what's going on exactly. Of course be prepared, you know, measure the time diligently. You know, you need to be keeping an update on what's going on with the prophecies and, you know, current events that's going on in the world and all that. But for the most part, you know, uh, we, we ought to be at ease and just trust that Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai um, is going to take care of things the way that it's, it's meant to be taken care of. All right. So once again, I think I'm entitled to this video, His Ways Are Higher. The first, the first one I'm going to start off with is uh, Isaiah chapter 55. And... <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our power, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So the way that we think of things is, you know, his intelligence is is much more marvelous and wonderful than anything that we could ever even imagine. You know, we can't even fathom the power, the glory, okay, and uh, just the all-out, all-out excellency of the Heavenly Father, okay? You know, the whole world was created uh, by Him and through Him, all right? You know, He's the one that, that put the technology in the, in the, uh, the modern-day Smith, the scientist, to create the atom, I mean, to create the uh, the splitting of the atom, okay, to create the nuclear weapons. He's the one that, if you think about something even as simple, well, something we take for granted, even of an uh, engine on a vehicle, is very complex. You know, like who just wakes up and thinks about that kind of stuff, right? The Lord put it, the, the Lord, he was the one that put it on that, on the person's spirit to create all this different technology and inventions that we have. And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't even fathom these things. And that's with every aspect of, of this universe, all right, he's in control of it all, so, you know, he does things that we don't understand, but we got to trust in his ways, because once again, his thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways, and it says, verse 9, for the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, all right, so we got to, we got to trust in that, okay, now next scripture, I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 3, and uh, it says, let me see, it says, uh, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Meaning, and you go into that word heart, it goes into your mind. Trust in, the word, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, meaning the mind, and lean not into thine own understanding. All right? In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So in everything that you do, before you make any choices, big or small, Okay, you got to acknowledge the Lord. You got to acknowledge what the scriptures say, you know, uh, take godly counsel, 
okay? You know, from, from people that you know that, from specifically the men of the Lord, the prophets, all right? You know, you should ask their advice, and uh, because a lot of times the Lord will speak through them, as, as, as in times of old, to guide you down the right path, all right? So, you know, be not wise and not, it says, uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he should direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Okay, when you fear the Lord, you know, you you think about his uh, His judgments. All right? And it, it keeps you from, from doing evil. It says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow, marrow to thy bones. All right? So, it, you know, your life depends on it. Okay? Your life depends on on uh, being obedient to the direction Oh, yeah, how about you? Y'all shy. You got to remember that. All right. Because, uh, let's see. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 28 now. It tells you here. Let's see, Proverbs chapter 28 and uh, verse 26. It says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. All right. So, if you trust in your own mind, you trust because your mind will play tricks on you. All right, your mind will play tricks on you. Your your, your heart, meaning your mind, will have you committing sins, and we all know that that sin uh, leads to death. The way to do sin is death. All right, so you can't you can't trust in your own in your own uh in your own heart in your own mind. All right, you you, you know you it says in the scriptures. That even our very thoughts, even our every thought needs to become obedient to the Hamashiach, to the words of the Bible. All right. The, these words are faithful and true. They're never going to fail you. Okay. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. All right. And how do you walk wisely? Okay. How do you walk wisely? Matter of fact, let's see. Uh, I get a few scriptures on that. Go well, to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Okay. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23 says, um, <clears throat> Oh, yeah, for thy commandment, for the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs are instruction of the way of life. And the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the, the law, following the law says commandments, okay, that that's that, that's uh that's where wisdom, wisdom comes from. Alright. Well it comes from the spirit, but but when you follow the law says commandments, you depart from evil. And you're showing that you, you have understanding. Job 28 28. It says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? So the fear of the Lord, that's going to, you know, once again, that's, that's going to spare you. You know, that, that's going to be, that's going to be your, your, uh, your health. Okay? And your, your light. Let me see. Back to Proverbs. Let me see. Where was I at? Proverbs 28. I'm just going to read that last verse in there again, and then we'll move on from that. Proverbs 28 and 26. I'll read that again. It says, uh, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. All right? And, and to walk wisely is to fear the Lord. All right? So when you fear the Lord, you're going to be delivered. And once again, this is not in part of the, the lesson that I had planned out, but I'm going to get this anyways. Psalms chapter 34. All right? It says, when you walk wisely, you're going to be delivered. And how is that going to happen? It tells you right here, Psalms 34. It just said, to fear the Lord. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So the angel, the angels of the Lord are watching those that fear. Okay, the angels on the right-hand side are watching those that fear, and they're going to deliver you from trouble. Okay? So, once again, man, you know, it's extremely important to walk wisely. And the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, as we just read. All right, that's 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 going to be part of your deliverance. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter seventeen. All right, Jeremiah chapter seventeen, and we we'll start at verse nine. All right, it says, uh, "The heart, meaning the mind, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it?" All right, In your heart. Your mind is desperately wicked. Uh, you know, if you read in back in Genesis, it even tells you that all the thoughts of the man, the, all the thoughts of men were, were nothing but continuously evil. All right. 
There's another scripture in the book of Sirach, I believe it says, uh, it says, all men are given unto evil from their youth. All right. So until the Lord brings that rod of correction upon you, you know, then for the most part, pretty much everybody on the face of the earth is wicked. All right. You know, we, we all, even, even those of the elect, we, before we were woken up, you know, Lord willing, we're that number where the elect, before we were woken up though, we, we were living just like the people of the world, you know? And, uh, but, but, you know, the water, you know, we've been, we've been turned from that and brought into the marvelous light. All right. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. All right. Let me see. Uh, okay. Look at this. Jeremiah 17 and 13. It says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from thee shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. All right. It says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Okay, but how is the Lord going to do that? You're not, you're not obedient. All right. You know, Lord, he, he wants us to be obedient to him. <clears throat> okay, so that's pretty much that's pretty much what I got for that. Let's go to uh second Ezra chapter four. Alright, you know, we just gotta have trust that the Lord is gonna guide us in the right path. Alright. Second Ezra chapter four, and I'm gonna start at I'm gonna start at verse one, read on down. It says, um uh, And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer and said Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High. So he says, pretty much saying, you know, you, I've, 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 uh, I've made you a prophet, and and now you you got puffed up, and now you want to now you want to try to understand knowledge that is too high for you. It says, then said I, yea, my Lord, and he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee. Or of, if thou canst declare me, one, I will show thee also the way that thou desires to see. And I will show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. Alright. And I said, Tell on my Lord. Then said he unto me, Go thy way, weigh me like the weight of the fire, or measure me the blast of the wind, or call me again the day that is past. Then answered I and said, What man is able to do that, that thou shouldest ask such things of me? All right, so essentially what, what happened here is the angel, he said, okay, you want to, he, he said, uh, answer these, he gave him some riddles. Okay, well, not, I'm not going to say riddles, but but he said, uh, he gave him some confusing questions, and you're going to understand why once I once I read on down, all right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read those questions again in verse 5. So 2 Ezra chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, I said, tell on my Lord, he's speaking to the angel, then said he unto me, go thy way. And weigh me the weight of the fire. So tell me how much fire weighs. Or measure me the blast of the wind. Or call me again the day that is past. Then answered I and said, What man is able to do that? That thou shouldest ask such things of me. So, that, so you know, Ezra is like, you know, who, who can answer those kind of questions? And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise? Peradventure thou wouldest say unto me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into hell, neither did I climb up into heaven. Nevertheless, now have I asked thee, but only of the fire and wind, and of the day wherewith, wherethrough thou hast passed, and of things from which thou canst not be separated, and yet canst thou, yet canst thou give me no answer of them. Of them. So what he's saying is, he's saying pretty much, okay. If I was to ask you a deeper question about the things of the ocean, the things of heaven, all right, and the things of hell, he said, would you be able to answer them? And he said, he said, of course not. And then he said, he all, and then he, he pretty much says to him uh, <clears throat> that I ask you of things that are here on the earth that are commonplace unto you, such as the fire and the wind. All right, it says where through thou hast passed. So he's, he's I, so I've asked you of things that you deal with on a daily basis. 
All right, and you still can't even give me an answer for those. That's what, that's what the angels say. So he's, he's, he's reasoning with them. He said, moreover unto me, thine own things and such as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know. So he said, you can't even understand the things that, that are around you that are commonplace for you. He said, how should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the way of the highest and the world being how out, now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in my sight? Okay, so he says, if you can't even understand the things, the things of the earth and the things that are commonplace in your life, then how are you going to understand the ways of the Heavenly Father? Okay, it's, it's beyond your comprehension. That's pretty much what the angel is saying. And the reason why I wanted to read this is because this is, uh, this is very, um, what's it called? So it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good mindset to, to have. And I think that it builds, it builds your trust in the Heavenly Father, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, he moves and he does things that we don't, that we don't quite understand. You know what I'm saying? Now he's given us, he's given us a playbook, which is the Bible, the prophecies. So we, we know what's coming, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, really just be satisfied, be happy that you are an Israelite and trust in the heavenly father, you know, especially when we see these prophecies come to pass. Because we know that if if the if the evil prophecies are coming exactly the way that that he has uh, laid them out for us, then we know the good prophecies are going to come as well, right behind that. So, I just thought that was that that was good to read. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna see if there's any more meat on that. Hmm. So I can bear with me. Okay, I'm gonna. This is this is more meat on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep reading. All right. So this is this is a little bit deeper, but it it's it makes sense. It's got to take your time. So uh, Second Ezra chapter four, and I'm gonna say verse twelve. Then said I unto him, It were better that we were not at all, than that we should still live in wickedness and to suffer and to and not to know wherefore. So wherefore means why. So it's, he says it's better that we don't live at all than to suffer, okay, and live in wickedness and not really understand why that is. All right. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come, let us go and make war against the sea that it may depart away from, from before us and that we may make us more woods. The floods of the sea also in like manner took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain, that there also we may make us another country. The thought of the wood was in vain, for the fire came and consumed it. The thought of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught, for the sand stood up and stopped them. If thou wert judge now betwixt these two, so that if you were judge between these two, whom wouldst thou begin to justify, or whom wouldst thou condemn? So the angels give him a parable, all right? Ezra, I answered and said, Verily, it is a foolish thought that they both have devised, for the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea also hath his place to bear his floods. Then answered me, he me and said, Thou hast given a right judgment, but why judgest thou not thyself also? Okay. It says, For like as the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea to his floods, even so they that dwell upon the earth may understand nothing but that which is upon the earth. And he that dwelleth above the heavens may only understand the things that are above the height of the heavens. Then answered I and said, O Lord, beseech thee, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me understand. Let me have understanding, Salaki. Okay, so essentially, pretty much what it's saying is that, you know, you're only you're only meant to understand certain things. Okay, you're only in, un, only in, you're only meant to understand what the Most High has given you. Okay, it's pretty much what it's saying. And then for the rest of that, you get, that's where faith comes in, okay? Trusting in the Lord, having faith. And it, what does it tell you in the book of Hebrews? It tells you that without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. I think that's, uh, is that Hebrews 11? Let me see. I got to find it right quick. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I think it is Hebrews 11, but so I like can bear with me. Okay, hang on one second. 
without faith. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Salaki, bear with me. Okay. Yeah, it is Hebrews 11. I don't know why I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, uh, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right? And then it gives a bunch of examples of faith, Okay, show, of, of uh, different of people in the Bible that showed their faith through their works. All right. It says now faith is the substance. I'm going to read verse one, Hebrews 11 and one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. All right. So we may not see everything in full. You know, we prophesy in part, we know in part. Okay. We know in part, we prophesy in part, um, you know, but uh, we just got to, once again, we just got to trust that the Lord has a, a plan that um you know that he's gonna work out for us now first corinthians chapter two we'll go there all right first corinthians chapter two and i'm gonna put uh verse 13 all right it's actually i'm gonna say verse 12. okay oh man all right yeah, verse 12, it says, Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. All right. So pretty much essentially, the, 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 uh, the Most High gives us the spirit of wisdom and knowledge of what he wants us to understand. All right. And if, if there's certain things you don't understand, then he it ain't time for you to understand it. OK. And that's OK. Once again, we get, you know, that comes with trust in the Lord. All right. It may not be exact time for you to understand something and then he'll give it to you later on. I got a few more scriptures and I'm going to close out. Looks like my phone is freezing up. So lock it, bear with me. First Corinthians. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. All right, here we go. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And <clears throat> I'm going to do a verse 18. Let's start at verse 18. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. All right. And uh, it says, for 19, verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord know, knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So it doesn't matter how much wisdom you think that you have in this world. Okay. In your own heart, in your own mind, is foolishness to the Most High. The only thing that matters is His counsel and His wisdom. Okay? So you, you got to understand that. All right, that's extremely important. And now the last scripture I'm going to bring out is Micah chapter 7. All right. Micah chapter 7. <clears throat> and, uh,. Let's see. I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine, o mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Jehovah watch me. I will shy because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me he will bring me forth to the light and i shall behold his righteousness all right so you know once again man the lord he is our light all right his law and commandments is our light okay and we got to trust in, in in that even when we're sitting it's a, it tells you verse 8 you know it says when i sit in darkness the lord shall be a light unto me all right but once again you just got to trust in that you got to have faith 
It's, it's, it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. And how do you how do you show that you got faith through your works? So that's all I got for you guys. Lord willing, that was edifying. That being said, all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakudash. Shalom.